Focus on your breath. Breathe in a way that feels good all the way in. Think of the breath going down, not only into the lungs, but also into the blood vessels, into the nerves, out to every pore. Nourishing the whole body, from your head down to your feet. And this way, when the body is nourished, the blood flows easily. It's good for the different organs of the body. And it's also a good place for the mind to settle in and get a sense of nourishment, too. Because the mind wants pleasure, it wants a sense of ease. And if it can't find it here, it's going to go out looking for other things outside. And if it can't find good things, it'll take just whatever it can find. We notice around the earth the coyote scat changes as the seasons change. And you get some seasons where they're, you can tell that they've been feeding on the persimmons, others have been feeding on the avocados. And then when there are no persimmons and no avocados, you find all kinds of stuff in the scat. I found little pieces of plastic rope, which shows that when you're hungry, you'll eat anything. And it's the same with the human mind. We think that wealth, status, praise, Sensual pleasures are going to be good food for the mind, because we don't have anything better. And we eat these things, and what do they do? They turn into loss. They turn into loss of status. They turn into criticism. They turn into pain. And they don't really belong to us anyhow. We take them in, and we have to give them back. These are things that belong to the world with wealth. When you look at a dollar bill, whose signature is on there? It's not yours. Even with your credit card that has your name, the important name on the credit card is the name of the bank. As for status, that's something people can give and take as they like. Criticism, praise, it's their mouths, it's their intentions. You can't force people to do things for you. There's a scene in the Pali Canon where a king is in his bedroom together with his queen. And I asked her at one point, is there anyone you love more than yourself? And he's hoping, of course, that she'll say, yes, I love you more than I love myself. But she's no fool. She says, no, there's nobody I love more than I, more than I love myself. And how about you? Is there anybody you love more than yourself? And the king says, no. So you're never going to find anybody who loves themselves so much that they'll be willing to praise you when they don't want to, or don't feel that they have to, just out of pure love of you. And the same with pleasure and pain. These things don't belong to us, they belong to the world. And yet we try to take nourishment off of them. And it's pretty poor nourishment. It's better to nourish the mind with good qualities. Qualities like mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind. Alertness, the ability to watch what you're doing. And ardency, the desire to take whatever you're doing and do it well. If you've got these qualities working for you, you can feed off them, and they're, they're nourishing. They're yours. So be mindful of the breath. Be alert to what you're doing as you stay with the breath. As the mind wanders off from the breath, be alert to that too and bring it back. When you wander off, be ardent in coming back as quickly as you can. When you're with the breath, be ardent in trying to be as sensitive as possible to what kind of breathing would feel best for the body right now. What way of perceiving the breath, what images of the breath would make the breath easy to have flow around the whole body. So there's a sense of nourishment that goes all the way down to your fingertips, all the way down to your toes. This is a good nourishment. It belongs to you. This is your space inside. So take advantage of that fact. All too often we ignore this space because we're so concerned with issues of the world, because we, of course we think that's where we're going to get our food. But the Buddha is saying, no, there's better food inside. Starting with concentration, building on virtue, developing into discernment, and finally yielding release. That's the best way to feed the mind. Strengthen it to the point where it's free. It doesn't need to feed anymore. But in the meantime, you've got to feed it, so feed it well. Feed it wisely. Then you'll be able to develop the strength that you need 